G'day, Tragic here, and I've been playing around with Battlegrounds recently, and uh, my goal is to do Arkham Horror, and I've been looking for something a little bit more visually appealing than Vassal, which I don't really like. And so this is, seems like a really good option. It's a little bit weird though, it takes me a bit of a while to get used to, but it has a lot of extremely good features. So the idea is that Arkham Horror, I love that game, but not many of my other friends really play it. And so I play it a lot solo, but then you've got to set it all up and then my cats knock everything down while I'm at work or something. So I wanted to virtualize it so I could play it on the laptop. So, but before I did that, I did like a simpler game just to test out Battlegrounds. And this is it. This is a dungeon uh, run, dungeon run. So it's a very, very good game. So I'll just uh, show the thing, well, let, tell me what you guys think. So basically I'll just go load game and I'll load up uh, Dungeon Run. And this is basically the, the, the basic setup, okay? So the first thing you need to do with Dungeon Run is you shuffle the boss deck and then you just pick a, bo pick a boss and delete the other cards and then stick the boss layer over the top and just stick it over there. And this is pretty much how you'll uh, be doing the game. Now, like I said, this is still in super beta and what I mean by that is that I, I haven't finalized the size of these images and stuff like that, so if they're too big. So for this demo, we're gonna do a three player uh, game. So what you do, you shuffle four of the base tiles in for each player. So we just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and we just get rid of the other ones. And let's just shuffle them together. And then these are the special tiles. We take two for each player. So that's one, two, one, two, one, two, and we delete the other ones. And then we can just, uh, oh, I should have shuffled them first actually. Doesn't matter. It's only a demo. And let's shuffle that. And now we have our dungeon deck. So we'll just stick this here. Okay, so that's pretty much ready to go. I don't like using the first player, so I'm just gonna delete that and we're ready to rumble. So I'm just gonna save this as demo save 01. And what we want now is our heroes, obviously. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go load and we're gonna load three heroes. Let's get, uh, let's get stabbings. You can't go wrong with stabbings. And load deployment, let's get uh, the fourth vessel, can't go wrong with the fourth vessel. And load deployments. Uh, my last guy, I think I'll get, let's get a chick. Let's get uh, the elf girl. Okay, so what you do here is we just set this up. Doesn't have to be, you know, anywhere in particular. You just need to stick it somewhere on the board and that's going to be the player, the player's area. And the way we kind of organize this in this application is that we can now zoom into this. Uh, there we are. Zoom into here. I'll put it on 120. Give him some room so he can put all his uh, trophies out. And then I'll just save this as stabbings. Okay, so as you can see, it just makes these little buttons that people can click on to move around the board and quickly check on their, their hero and adjust it and all that kind of stuff. So let's do one for him. vessel and notice I'm not putting a percentage here so it won't change the the scale factor for the player but I can if you want 
it's up to uh, the player. Like I'll, I'll do it for these guys, for example. So I'll set this to 140, and then I'll set the last one to. I have no idea how to pronounce that, so I set that to like 140. I'll set them all to 140. And now you can just sort of jump around the the screen, you know? So we've got our all view, and then we've got our player view, and uh, we can just quickly jump to any of the heroes to access their individual stuff. Or you can just play on the all view if you prefer. It's up to you, obviously. There's no no rules. Okay, so, well, basically, I mean, that's the application. Uh, it seems to be working pretty well. I'll just save, I'm saving a lot because I've been having uh, some pretty weird crashes, which we're trying to track down. But yeah, so that's how it works. So for example, we'll draw from the encounter deck, like we'll say, oh, we'll grab our little tokens, these little tokens I've made for all the, all the people. Uh, let's, let's zoom to the player view. And it's the first turn, so we'll draw a tile. And, hmm, okay, so we'll do that. Let's draw an encounter card. I mean, I'm not doing this, oh, I should probably shuffle them first. Let's uh, shuffle the artifact deck. Now I'm not actually playing to the correct rules. I'm just showing you that you can, you know, how it all works. Oops, forgot to flip that one over. And you can see, you know, you just sort of build the dungeon up as you like it. Now I said, because it's only in beta, you know, it's all, obviously that's running into those guys. I need to figure out a better way to organize the table. But you can kind of see how it all works, you know, and these guys can all move around. So let's uh, just lock all these things down. Move to bottom. And uh, what's it lock? No, I'm still learning this myself. Uh, it's in here somewhere. Oh wait, I've got multiple selected. That's why. There we go. So lock, lock. So you lock these tiles as you place them, and then they they get stuck there and they can't be altered. And they, uh, mm, they, they stay at the top though, arranged to top, arranged to top, arranged to top. Okay, now these guys should be able to move around. Okay, yeah. So these guys are just moving around, nice and funkily through the through the dungeon. So if we pull a, a monster. If we pull a monster, let's uh, draw a monster. Okay, so we've drawn a Tundra Orc. So what we do, we load the Tundra Orc. Oh yeah, we just uh, tab and load monsters and we want the Tundra Orc. And there's the Tundra Orc chit that we put on the table. So that say uh, goes here. And uh, you can click on this, and as he gets wounded, see so he's got a w z uh, wound zero, life four, and you can just press one, two, three, and then four, he's dead, and then five, the chit actually turns into your 
trophy, which you can then stick, you know, in your trophy pile. And, uh, yeah, also, and when you're leveling up, you can just click on these things and, you know, level up this way. Now, I haven't... I may need to change this because we might need more of these in case you ever get higher than nine, which is possible, like very possible. And to actually do wounds on your hero, you actually use uh, wound proper wound chips. So, you know, like, like this. So you just put some wounds on him and you can duplicate them, stick them on. And that's how you can do wounds on your characters. And that's pretty much it. So we've got all the, you've got all the, the monster chits. So like the Reaper. Or you've got your, uh, and I, the, you've got the, the other chits, like, uh, you know, the special ones, like say the Adventurous Ghost because you don't fight this, it's a little bigger and stuff. And again, I haven't, I haven't, I might have all the, the sizes wrong because it does get a little bit cramped when you've got everybody on the table at once. But uh, yeah, that's about it. And as for the, the monsters, you know, say the boss leg comes out, the actual boss, I haven't got a chit for, you just use the boss card itself just like you do in the real game. Woohoo. And that's pretty much uh, pretty much how the game works. You've got your artifacts and, oh, the dice. Now, Battlegrounds has an extremely good special dice system, like, uh, like this really complicated system that's designed for doing... RPGs where you have really, you know, modifiers to all your dice and all this kind of stuff. So this is what I'll use for Arkham Horror. You know, so you want to write 10 dice by 6, modify to each die, we'll put plus 1, minimum, you know. You can make all these complicated macros, save them, and then just roll by, you know, just clicking on roll dice macro down here. There you go. So that's an example. But we, we can't use this for... For dungeon run, unfortunately, because it uses comparative dice matching for blocking. So I've put red dice for, well, there's two different colored dice, you use whatever you want, but I I think that white for us, red for baddies. So say we roll four dice, we just uh, select the dice and go control R, and it rolls. And then we can roll the four, you know, the comparative dice, and there we go, so you can see the matches by just looking at them visually like that, you know? And that's how uh, the dice rolling works. And that's about it. So some of the sizes are a little weird, but in general, that is the plugin. And it's got a chat you know, and that's, uh, that's pretty much how she rolls. Okay, well, let me know what you think, and I will catch you on the flip side. And now, assuming I can get this to work properly and not have any crash, weird crashes and stuff, because it's actually, a, it's, it's, it's not too much work setting this up, but it is, it is, you know, a little bit of work. Uh, what am I doing? It is a little bit of work, so I'm actually, I hit the wrong button and I duplicated that card a whole bunch of times by a mistake. There we go. So those three cards weren't supposed to be there. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to do something as complicated as, uh, well, that's the artifact. You can pull an artifact now. I don't want to do something as complicated as Arkham Horror until I'm sure that this is going to work. But as you can see, it's uh, it works pretty well. And unlike Vassal, it's it's you can make the if you put some time into the plugin, you can make it very very pretty. Like I made all these little chits, 
and it's very cool, I think. But uh, yeah, so let me know what you think, and I will catch you next time.